Well, hey, Rock Church Anywhere family. So glad you could join us today. It is fall. October is here. You know what the Rockets football season? Trader Joe's down the street smells like cinnamon sticks. And my wife has definitely got a pumpkin spice something at home. But hey, we're so glad that you're here. We're going to be talking after the service uh, a little bit about kind of like the seasons in life, especially as we go from summer to fall. Um, it's just been on my heart and on my mind. And I just want to talk about change, but how God stays constant through it. So um, let's take some time just to prepare our hearts, uh, share this with a friend or invite some people for, over just to join you in it. And uh, we'll be talking after the service once again about seasons and change and how God is constant through it all. We'll see you soon. Church, good to see everybody today. God bless you. Welcome to the Rock Church. My name is Travis. I am the Point Loma campus pastor and want to say hello to everyone. And, and uh, God bless you, everyone joining us online, watching from church anywhere and everywhere and in the building. Why don't we put our hands together and welcome our extended church, our extended family, wherever you're joining us. God bless you. Good to see you. If you didn't know, we're, we're one church with locations all throughout the county, and we have people that are all over the country, all over the world, and uh, it's just a joy and a blessing to come together on Sunday or any day just to lift up the name that's unlike any other name. That's, his name is Jesus. Come on, everybody. Let's just give Jesus a round of applause. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Uh, I want to tell you about a couple of things before we get into the message. You heard Pastor Jesse, if you're in the room, you just heard him say it. If you're online, you're watching us later. We've got a men's conference coming up on October 22nd. Where are the fellas at? Men of the Rock, you in the house? Where are the fellas of the, fellas of the house? Uh, October 22nd, I'm going to be there. Pastor Miles will be there. We've got a guest speaker coming in, John Bevere. He's going to be spitting fire and encouraging us to just champion our relationship with the Lord and how that's going to bless our families as well. So come join us for that. And then on the 29th, someone say 29th. October 29th, we have a one-day life class. And for those that are just trying, we got, we got some people excited about life class in the room this morning. Come on, somebody. Uh, life class is that kind of first step. Sometimes it's that next step for those that are looking to get plugged into the life of the church. And I think this is a great church to be a part of. And this church isn't for everybody, and we're okay with that. I'm okay with that, but it's for a lot of people. And life class is that place where you say, you know what, I want to be a member of this church uh, you get a chance to join and serve on one of our awesome teams. You learn about what we believe in our faith and our foundations and, and, and what we believe as a, as a church and how we're on mission to go reach the world. And also you can uh, join a group. There's so many great things. You can knock out the whole life class because it's normally four every Sunday except for the fifth Sunday. You can knock out the whole thing in one day, October 29th. And then come back next Sunday. We're starting a new series with our senior pastor called Heart for the House. And you're not going to want to miss this because we're going to be unpacking all the things that we believe God has put on this house and the heart that we have for our city and what we're dreaming for, what we're believing God for. That's next week, so come back. But um, today we're going to continue in, in kind of what's been a collection of messages. We didn't intend for this. We were getting ready to uh, do heart for the house. And then Pastor Miles did a, did a talk a couple weeks ago um, on satanic agreements. How many were here for that? Good, 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 good. I hope that was helpful. That helps me. And we, we learned that, man, some of us had made agreements with the enemy. You, you believed a lie, and we got a chance to break those agreements in Jesus' name. And then last week we found out, uh, Pastor gave a message called Satan's number one weapon. And oftentimes his number one weapon is just to convince you and me that sin has no consequence, that you're God. You can just do whatever you want. Sin has no, no weight there's no way you could just go around doing whatever, whatever you want, but that's not the case. Sin has a consequence. In fact, it's so consequential. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, went to the cross for it. That's how significant it is. And so today, I wanted to kind of stay in spirit with those messages. So I'm going to talk to you about resisting the devil. Resisting the devil. Because Satan's worst nightmare, he's got a number one weapon, but maybe his worst nightmare is a bunch of spirit-filled Christians walking around in the full authority of who God's called us to be, pushing back darkness and resisting the devil. That's his worst nightmare. That's not just older people. That's not just, I come to church every single Sunday Christian. That's not just, a, I just met Jesus Christian. That's for everybody. You want to know who this message is for? It's for everybody. It's for, it's for the student who's about to go off to college. You're thinking, man, I grew up in church. I'm hoping to find a place where I can get plugged into this message is for you because you need to resist the devil. You're going to need to resist the devil. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll continue with our, our words today. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our time together and these three weeks where we've been unpacking the, the ways and the lies of the devil. And today I pray as we learn about how we can resist him. 
We can push back darkness in your name. I pray that you would empower us, fill us, encourage us with your word, and speak to us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, someone shout amen. Amen, amen. Um, on Sunday evenings, for example, later tonight, uh, most, most weeks I'll go to the grocery store. And I don't do all the grocery shopping, but I try to help out and share some responsibilities with my wife. And so as much as I can, on Sunday evening, I'll go to the grocery store and get kind of the, the, the lunch stuff and just the basics. I'm not trying to do no fancy stuff. I'm just getting basics. Come on, some. I'm just trying to get milk and bread and butter, you know what I mean, like some Lunchables here and there, put it together, I'm out, quick. But I want to help. And my wife recently has been saying, hey, be careful, watch your surroundings when you go. Because it's late and it's dark and the time's changing, it's gonna be even darker. And, and then this didn't just start all of a sudden, it's because a couple years ago, on a Sunday evening, I went to the grocery store and I was about done with my shopping and as I'm checking out, a young woman comes screaming and running in, crying into the grocery store. And we're, we're all like, what's going on, what's happening? And right after her was another guy following, and he looked shocked and stunned and almost kind of paralyzed and didn't know what to do. And behind him was a third guy yelling at the other guy. And we're like, what's, what's, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's going on? And the young woman came over to where, where I was, and I said, are you okay? What's going on? And in her, her crying and panic, she describes that she was just held by gunpoint at the ATM. It's a true story. And so I'm thinking, okay, I, are one of these dudes the dude? Because, you know, I mean, they're both in here. Maybe we should just, <laughs> you know, am I safe? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm about to cry with you. Like, this is scary. <laughs> we didn't know who they were. And so there was a woman there, and I said, well, why don't you comfort her? And we realized the guy that was shocked worked at the grocery store. He was just stuck and, 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 and paralyzed. The guy that came in running saw it all happen and was yelling at the guy that did nothing. We found out, it was, it was, it was, she was crying. He was frozen, and he was mad at everybody. <laughs> Bad guy gets away, takes the money. I don't know what happened. But every, everybody was at each other, one after the other. And, and, and the guy that was yelling at the guy that did nothing was like, dude, you, you were like one of, the, one of those, you know, those, those goats that if you scare the goat, they pass out. You just, ha, ah, they go, ah. <laughs> you seen those goats? That's what he was like. He didn't do anything, and the guy was so mad because he was too far away to help this poor woman. She was held by gunpoint, young girl, t t her money was taken, it got away, and, and the guy was shook to his core, paralyzed in fear, didn't know what to do, didn't try to protect, didn't try to fight, didn't once try to resist. He just stood by confused and afraid. The bad guy won that night. Here's what you need to know. Here's what I'm telling you the story. You and I are in a spiritual battle. We're in a struggle with a bad guy. His name's the devil. His name's Satan. And we have too many people, both Christians and those that just walked into church today. You're not a believer. You're not even sure about this Jesus guy. But we have too many people walking around confused, afraid, and stuck, not resisting the efforts of the devil. We're just standing there. I, I, wonderful people. I, I got a great job, but, but, but you're paralyzed in fear. And so when you go to work, you, you just sit in depression. The students that on Sundays you come and your Bibles are open and God bless you. But then on Monday, you're in fear. And you have thoughts of suicide and maybe I should just take my life. Maybe it's not worth it. Good people who are walking around and you love God but you're just stuck, confused, paralyzed. Here's my challenge for us. Because of the constant spiritual battle we're in. And by the way, if you don't know that we're in a battle, you need to know that we're in a battle. And maybe we know Satan's number one weapon, but he's got more lies than you can imagine. And one of his greatest lies is to make you and I believe that he doesn't even exist. And then you and you are at each other, and then you're at them, and I'm at you, and that's not the case. We're in a spiritual battle. We need to confront and resist the devil every day because of the constant spiritual battle we're in. That, that's my challenge to us today, that we need to confront and resist the devil every day. And nobody told me this growing up in church. You know that? Nobody told me this growing up, that I could actually resist the enemy, that I had spiritual weapons of warfare, and I'm gonna share this later, but I didn't know that. I, I just thought growing up it was just love God and try not to get snatched up by the devil. You know what I mean? It's like, like don't do bad things. That was, my, that was my relationship. Just love God and don't get snatched. But can you imagine if we watched a football game and all they did was play defense? Can you imagine if, if, if this team played offense and you were on the defense team? 
just don't get snatched. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, don't let them score. You're just over here, just tired. T- and you may be able to do that for a while. I'm in the game. I got the jersey. I'm on the field. But I don't play offense. I'm just defensive. You're going to wear out. You're going to wear out. And so the challenge is because we're in that spiritual battle, you and I need to confront and resist the devil in Jesus' name. That's what we're called to do. And here's what James 4, verse 7 through 8 says. Submit yourselves then to God. That's how it starts. Get God in your life. Then resist the devil. I mean, it says it plain as day right here. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? He'll flee from you. No wonder he's not running away from your life. You haven't resisted him. I'm just so oppressed. I've just got so much going on. I've just got so much pain. Have you resisted the devil? You're just playing defense all the time? It says you resist him, he flees from you. First Peter 5, 8 through 9 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, what, prowls around like a roaring lion to do what? Looking for someone to devour. He's out here trying to eat you up. He wants to mess you up. He wants to mess up your mind. He wants to mess up your marriage. He wants to mess up your identity, who you think you are. And we're going to unpack this a little bit further, but... I want to talk to you around the message title today, Not Today, Satan. I want to talk to you around this this idea, Not Today, Satan. And we get this from the scriptures because uh, the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4. And if you've got your Bibles, would you go there, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew is the first gospel account, the first book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew's account of Jesus' life in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11. And the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. He has just been overwhelmed and filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he leads him into the desert, and he is tested and tempted by the devil. Now watch this. He tempts him before he's done anything. The devil comes before Jesus has done any ministry. He hasn't picked any of the disciples. He hasn't healed the sick. He hasn't healed the blind. He hasn't walked on water. Jesus has done nothing. Why would the devil come then? Because that's when he wants to get you and me before we've done anything. He knows your potential. He knows what you can do. He knows what God has planned for you. So he says, man, i got to get there first. I want to confuse them. I want to attack their identity. And here's what it says in Matthew 4, verse 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I bet he was. My goodness. How many of you have ever fasted before? Yeah, we did our first 40-day fast this last year, and it was rough. I mean, that was like, we've been doing 21 days, 21 days, our first 40 days. I had someone say, Pastor, I don't fast, I slow. I said, okay, man of God, what does that mean? He said, listen, I just take my time, and I thank God for every bite. I just slow. (laughs) You do you, boo. You do you. Between you and the Lord. Jesus was hungry after 40 days. In verse 3, the tempter came to him and said, if... You are the son of God. Highlight that in your Bible. Put your finger on that one. Put, 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 a, put a fold of edge in, in, in your, your notes. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. It says it again, if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift, up you with, lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put your Lord, your God, to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. Okay, this isn't in the Bible, but I just imagine this is kind of like a James Brown moment. How many of you know who James Brown is? I get that we got young people in the room, which is great. I'm glad you're here. James Brown was known as the king of soul. We got the king of pop, the king of rock, and he got the king of soul. And James Brown was known for the, being the king of soul. And, and, and he, he had a song, he would, he would call, it was called Please, Please, Please. And he would exhaust himself, and he would come down on his knees like this. And then one of his homies in the back would come with a cape. A rock, remember this? How many of you remember this, right? And he'd come with a cape, and he'd come like that, and he'd go, ooh, and he'd come up, and he'd be like, boom, 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 and he was back, he was refreshed. I'm like, whoa, James Brown. That's where he got this. That's where he got it. 
Angels is coming with the cape. Jesus is down and he pops up. Disciples, let's go. I mean, that's what it has, that's where it came from. <laughs> it's my imagination. Woo. <laughs> Satan attacks him three times, three different temptations, but two of them are the same thing. He says, if you are the son of God. In other words, are you really who God says you are? Come on. Don't raise your hand, but how many have thought that you were contemplating that question? Am I really who God says I am? Am I really loved by God? Have I really been forgiven for what I did? Do I really believe that God has great plans for my life? And Satan is whispering that to you like he did to Jesus. Are you really who God says you are? That's how you know it's a spiritual battle. Because Satan wants you to question your God-given identity. I know God's word says this about you. You were made in his image, but are you really that? He wants to question. He wants you to question your God-given identity. He wants you to question your purpose, the plans that God has for you. you. You've dreamed of it. You've thought of it. People have encouraged you with it. But Satan is sitting there going, are you sure that's who God's called you to be? And you're going, I don't, I don't know. I'm over here playing defense, trying not to get snatched. I've never resisted the devil to even know, to press through it, to break through. But you and I are called to do what Jesus does, and he says, away from me, Satan, not today. Not today, Satan, I know know who I am. That's what we're supposed to say. Not today, Satan, I know who I am. I'm a son. I'm a son of the Most High God. I'm a daughter of the King, ladies. I am chosen. I am beloved. I've been healed. I'm made whole. God's got a plan for me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am more than a conqueror. I am saved. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. God sees me, loves me, has chosen me. I'm a child of the most high God. That's who I am. I know exactly who I am. Not today, Satan. That's the constant spiritual battle. You and I need to resist the devil every day. So how do we resist him? Because it's easy to say it. How do you do it? Come on now. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare, though we're not flesh and blood. We, we, don't, we don't do this, even though some of you want to do that. No, it says, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. They're spiritual. They're divine. They're heavenly. We've been given spiritual weapons of warfare. So we don't walk around punching the devil in the teeth, even though you'd like to. We do it spiritually. We do it spiritually. And so I want to give you four weapons to resist the devil today. I'm going to give you four weapons that you can go away from today going, I'm equipped. I'm ready. I'm postured. I'm not, I'm not just in the game with the jersey, with the shirt, with the helmet, blocking people. I'm on a fence. I'm getting after it. Four weapons to resist the devil. Number one, we resist the devil with prayer. We resist the devil with prayer. We resist the devil with prayer. Psalm 34 verse 17 says, when the righteous cry for help, what the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. And some of you think when I pray, I wonder if God hears. God hears. But not only does God hear when you cry, he delivers. And he delivers you from your troubles. In Mark 9, 28 to 29, it says, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? What are they, what are they trying to drive out? The, the, the spirit that was in this boy. He was demon possessed and they've been trying, 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 trying and why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can only come out by what? By prayer. Church, look at me. There are some things in your life that will only go away, that will only be released, some things that will only be broken through because you prayed. I talked to everybody, you need to pray. I sought wise counsel, that's good, you need to pray. I I watched a TED talk on it, that's okay. It wasn't even TED, it was like TEDx. You're like, that's a little one. That's not even the real TED talk. You gotta pray. You gotta pray. You gotta pray. Um, this past weekend, just for like a day and a half, we took some of the Point Loma staff on like a one day retreat, refresh, and it was Friday night and it was Saturday morning, and we did like a sunrise prayer time, 6 30. So we're up early, getting ready, and my wife and I are, are we're in the, the, this hotel up north, and, and we are. Getting ready for the morning. We got about 20 minutes till we got to walk around to the courtyard 
and, and we're, we're in the bathroom, we're brushing our teeth, and the, and the toilet's not flushing. Uh-oh. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> the, the water's not coming on. We can't brush our teeth. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I, I can't use the restroom. I can't brush my teeth. I can't shower. I got 20 minutes to pray. And so I'm on the phone calling the front desk. I said, hey, the water's not working in, in our room. And he goes, oh, yeah, the whole building's out. I said, what? I'm going to let somebody know. I just want to wake up to no water. I said, how long till they put the water back on. He said, about 15 minutes. I said, brother, I got 10. I got 10 minutes because I have too much going on in my life and in my family's life, in my friend's life, not to make prayer. I got too much going on. I, uh, prayer is not a last resort. Prayer has to be the first response. It, it, it's not the spare tire. It's the steering wheel. It's the thing that I go, it, it controls my life. I lead with it. I got too many things going on not to pray. Because just like God wants to speak with you, the devil wants to speak with you. And whatever voice you agree with is the one that has the power. And so I want to talk to God. I want to pray with God. I want to cry out to God. And the scriptures tell us he hears and he delivers. And so if you found yourself worried about everything, it's probably because you've been praying about nothing. I'm worried about everything. You've been praying about nothing. I'm worried about school. Have you prayed and asked God to help you with school? I'm worried and I just feel just, ah, I'm attacked at work. Every time I go, she's there and she's in my face. Every time I'm there, he's there and he's in my business, wants to talk about this and how I believe that and that. Have you prayed about it? I'm worried about everything. You, you haven't prayed about anything. And it's not, I can wait to pray. It's no, I can't wait to pray. I have to pray. I have to pray. I have to seek the Lord. And prayer is not a my parents thing. Young people, look at, look at, look at me. Prayer is your thing. Prayer, I, I remember being in, 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 in uh, my, the bathroom where I grew up in my house, and my mom had put up this picture that said prayer changes things. And I would sit there and stare at this picture like, what does that mean? <laughs> what is that? And I would just sit there and stare. Prayer is not a grandma thing, a grandpa thing, a my uncle's thing. It's for the church people. No, prayer is a gift from God. So that you can go to him, you can cry out and say, God, see my situation. And he goes, I hear you, and I want to deliver you. And I'm coming on your behalf. You're in a spiritual battle. You've got to resist the devil with prayer. Here's number two. Your second spiritual weapon of warfare. We resist the devil with worship. Oh, I like this one. Oh, I like, we sang about it today. We resist the devil with worship. Um, how many of you know we have a rock church in Oahu? Come on, somebody. How many want to go vacation at rock church? Come on. I'm trying to go to church tomorrow in Oahu. Uh, Vanessa and I had, I had saved up, and we haven't had a, a really nice vacation in a while. We, celebrate, we just celebrated 10 years back in June of being married, 14 years together. And so we said, let's go to Oahu. And then while we're there, we'll go see the church, and it was beautiful. It was incredible. On the plane there, you can't do much. It's a one-way, five or six hours. And so you, you can log on and listen to whatever they have or watch whatever they have. And I got kind of intrigued by this one show. It's not a documentary, but more just kind of a, a, the life story based on Vicente Fernandez. Like how I roll those R's? Come on, somebody. I don't speak Spanish, but I can roll them. Come on. Vicente Fernandez. And he's a famous mariachi from Mexico. And two songs that were significant. Volver, volver. Come on, with the R's. Come on, that's nice. I'm practicing. <laughs> and El Rey. Now, I, and so I was just digging this show. We're on the plane. And so I, I went afterwards. I looked up these songs. And I'm like, Volver, Volver. Okay, that's a nice song. But El Rey, the king. And it kind of had like some, you know, let's go in it. It kind of had one of those in it. And I thought to myself, this would be a great walkout song. You ever dreamed of having a walkout song? <laughs> Come on, go Padres. Come on, tonight, game three, let's go. <laughs> Sometimes the, the pitcher, the closer, and the ninth inning comes out to a walkout song, you know, and he's got the, he's got the glove, and, and they're coming out, and they're, you know, <laughs> and he's got, getting pumped up. Or sometimes the boxer, the fighter, they'll do a walkout song, and he's just kind of getting jacked out, like, ah, I'm coming, about to get, get in there and, and, and do what I can do. You got the, the walkout song. Whatever my walkout song would be, it'd have to be something that would motivate me to take ground. Look up here. God has a walkout song. It's our worship. When you and I worship, it motivates God to come and take ground on your behalf. And if you don't believe me, I want to prove it to you. 
Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 to 22, it says, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to what? Sing. To sing. Come on, men of God. To sing. I don't know, it's just, it's just it's for the ladies, it's for my kids, it's for them, it's, it's not my thing. No, 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 no. God appoints men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army, saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. They're singing out in front. What was their strategy for war? Singing. What? <laughs> What are, we gonna, what are we gonna sing? Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Woo! They begin to sing and God takes notice and says, wow, they're giving me praise. This was their war strategy. This was their battle cry to set men in front of the army. You go first. The, the, the spears, nope. The arrows, nope. The bombs, we don't have any. <laughs> Slingshots, definitely not. The singers. When you begin to sing and praise God for his goodness and his faithfulness, heaven stands at attention and God dispatches angels on your behalf. Heaven stands at attention. Oh, he's singing? Woo-hoo! They're singing, she's singing, they're at home, they're not even at church. Oh, I'm about to go out there and do something on their behalf. I'm about to set an ambush to go take out whoever it is. I'm about to go against the enemy. They're not on defense, they're on offense. They're using their spiritual weapons. They pray and now they're worshiping. He's worshiping, she's worshiping on the way to work. Oh my goodness, and the devil hates it. The devil hates it. You know what, you wanna know why the devil hates it so much? There are three angels named in the Bible. Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. That's the devil, Lucifer. That was his heaven name before he was thrown down. You wanna know what his job was? Worship. He was in charge of the worship. And one day he gets arrogant and starts desiring the worship. And God, and God says, uh, excuse me player, um, <laughs> you must be confused. <laughs> Heck no. And, and some theologians say that a third of the angels got thrown down with the devil. Lucifer is Satan. And so he sees your worship and he goes, no, 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 I, I want that for me. That's my thing. And God says, no, that's my thing. That's my thing. That's my worship. And so when they worship me in the breakup, I'm their comforter. When, when they worship me when the, when the, when the job is lost, I, 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 I'm Jehovah Jireh, their provider. When they worship me in the sickness and the illness, I'm the great physician. When they worship me in the middle of the tension and the confusion, I'm coming on the way. I, I'm coming. Because it's a weapon. I'm resisting the devil. Not today, Satan. Not today. We're in a constant battle. You got to know that. You got to know that. And we can resist the devil every day with our prayer, with our worship. And number three, we resist the devil with scripture. We resist the devil with scripture. In Ephesians 6, there's a few verses I want to unpack quickly, but it talks about the armor of God. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against you and me, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, knowing that, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, man, is it coming, and it comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, Verse 14, stand firm then. Now watch this, pay attention, with the belt of truth. That holds things together, the truth. That's buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pay attention to the armor. The only offensive weapon is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I, I got the breastplate to protect myself. I got my feet so I can stand firm and not be moved. I got the belt of truth so it holds things together. I'm not easily shaken by weird doctrine or what the world says. I, I, got, the belt, I got God's word. 
What culture leads with, come on culture, what? God's word. I'm fixed with it. I got the shield of faith. I can, I can block the, the enemy. I mean, it's all defensive. The helmet of salvation secures my mind. I'm saved. All of the armor is to protect and save, except for the sword, except for God's word. And, and I didn't ask my son, and he's sitting right there, and so I'm a little embarrassed, but I brought one of his swords, and they were giving me a hard time in the bathroom. They're like, really, bro, all the illustrations you come out with, and you got this sword? <laughs> got this sword. We were um, walking around stores in this season. You can see all of the Halloween stuff. And I don't want to go too far down this story. It's another message. But, but some of that stuff is, is wild. Some of that stuff is so dark. And we were, we were walking by this store. <laughs> and I didn't notice it. But there was like a little, you know, hallway, and I walked in, and, and this thing popped out, and I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> it's just like it got, it scared me. And what was what was the worst part is with the guy behind me that laughed at me, and I was like, "Really, bro? Come on now! I just saved your life, man. That got me. It didn't get you. My kids are watching me. They don't care about you." I'm out here yelling. Ah. <clears throat> There's all kinds of stuff, decorations throughout our neighborhood, and. Some of it's real dark. And I'm like, you, you didn't just get that at Walmart. You had to go intentionally dream that thing up and buy that. And some of that stuff's got, got, got my kids scared. And so we, we walk around and we'll just quote scripture. And, and the scriptures tell us that God's word, the sword of the spirit, this is offensive. I, I can go around and I can actually use this. I can, I can fight with this. I can use God's word. And so we'll go around and... My son, what's Joshua 1, 9? Man, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Take that devil. We'll walk around and we'll see the things and see the signs. And so I can, I, can, I can be offensive because what am I supposed to do when I live in a world that scares my kids sometimes? Or what are you supposed to do when you live in a world that hates your marriage? And would rather you just divorce and go, you, you know, have a great time and, and sleep with whoever and call yourself whatever and, and dream up whatever ideas you, you think are yours and take things that don't, I mean, what are we supposed to do when we live this kind of world? What are you supposed to do when you can't sleep at night because you are just consumed with anxiety? And the things you see on social media are just so heavy and look nothing like your life. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to tell the devil, not today, Satan, in Jesus' name. For I know the plans I have for me, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper me and not to harm me. I take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and I go on offense. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I go on offense at the devil. And I use God's word as a spiritual weapon. Not today, not tomorrow, not never, devil. Get behind me, in Jesus' name. Here's number four. Here's the fourth thing, and then we're going to close our time together. But this one's maybe my favorite one. Number four, one of the ways that we resist the devil, we resist the devil with Jesus' name. And so we do it with prayer. We do it with worship. We, we do it with God's word, and we do it with Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says that, the 72 that had been sent out to go do ministry, they returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in what? In your name. Not in my name. Not in their name. Not in the name of wisdom. Not in the name of my money. Not in the name of my good behavior. Not in the name of my morality. Not in the name of my good deed yesterday. No, 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 no. The darkest things submit to us in Jesus' name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. We remember that. He was trying to get to worship, but he said, no, no, I saw Satan. I saw it. I was right there next to the Father like, ooh, <laughs> Holy Spirit, look what happened. I saw it. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. Psalm 44, verse 5, it says, Through you we push back our enemies. Through your name we trample our foes. Hallelujah. There is a, I'll close with a story. There is a, um, 
well-known story of a young girl, this is 2002, there's a documentary out, her name is Elizabeth Smart. And maybe some of you have heard the story and she's now told her story now that she has grown and, and been delivered from her captors. But when she was a young girl, um, she was kidnapped from her own home in Salt Lake City, Utah. And she was um, sexually abused to the furthest degree, um, was beaten, oppressed, trapped, and was taken away for nine months, for nine months. You know, they'd almost given up looking for her and her kidnapper, it was another woman with him, they started getting arrogant and thought, well, we're kinda, I, th- I think we got away with it. No one's coming after us, no one's looking for it. I think, we, I think we're good. And in their arrogance, they would dress Elizabeth up in clothes and, and, and disguises. And they would go to places like the grocery store. They'd go to the bank, they'd go into town. And on many occasions, Elizabeth would be there with her kidnapper, convinced in her mind she's stuck. Not her fault, she's the victim in the story. But at many occasions, there would be a police officer or a fireman or somebody there that could have helped, just right here. And she was convinced in her mind, if I say a word, if I speak a name, I'll be killed. She had been convinced by the bad guy. Praise God, 20 years later, we get to hear her story how she eventually was found and someone did recognize her and someone did go and help her. And she, to this day, goes and tells stories to help victims of kidnapping and sex trafficking and abuse. To this day, she goes around telling that story. But here's what I want you to hear. Here's what I want you to, to, to know for sure. There are so many people just one step away from freedom. One step, one word, one name. Just cry out and reach for Jesus. So many people are this close. In fact, many of you came to church today and you didn't know why, but your friend invited you. They've been telling you about this guy named Jesus who loves you, but he doesn't just love you where you are. He loves you too much to keep you there. He wants to grow you. He wants to show you the plans that he has for your life. He wants to heal you. He wants to show you that you have power. You don't just receive the love and walk around trying not to get snatched up. No, you can go on offense and you can take ground on behalf of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. The name like no other name. So here's my invitation because we're in this constant battle. Resist the devil every day. Resist the devil with prayer every day. Resist the devil in worship. Resist the devil with God's word and resist the devil in Jesus' name. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody today needs to make that decision and realize that your life is nothing without Jesus. He designed you to be in relationship with him. He's designed you for purpose. He's designed you to have wholeness. And it begins and ends with the name of Jesus. You got an enemy. And man, does he hate your potential. Man, does he hate your life. But you have been given power in the name of Jesus. There's no one like his name. Let's give God praise for that. Would you bow your head? Let's pray together, church. Heavenly Father, thank you today for our time in your word. We thank you that we can unpack your scriptures and encourage one another. We, we want to be like you. We want to be more like you. We want to be loved by you. And then as a Jesus follower, we will follow in your ways. And filled by your spirit, Jesus, you said, away from me, Satan, not today. And so that's our heart cry today. And if there's anybody here who needs to begin that relationship or renew that relationship, I want you to pray this prayer in the quiet of your heart. Just say, dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've failed. But I believe that you love me. And I believe that you've paid for my sin. I believe I can be made brand new. I confess you today as Lord of my life. I confess you as my Savior. Now I want everybody to join in on this last prayer as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. I want you just to pray this in your heart 
or out loud, say, devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You can't have my life. You can't have my mind. You can't have my heart. You can't have my family. And you can't have my relationships. You cannot have my future. I cancel any agreements I've made with you. I cancel any lie I've believed. My life belongs to Jesus. Devil, not today. Get behind me in Jesus' name. Come on now, someone say amen, Rock Church. Let's give God praise for that. Let's put an exclamation point on your decision today. Come on. He's good, he's faithful, and he's just. I'm gonna bring out Pastor Jesse. He's gonna tell you about what's next, but love you, God bless you. Let's go resist the devil today, amen? Amen, come on. Amen, amen. Can we give God some praise for Pastor Travis's message today? Amen. Would you all join me as we stand and end our time together? I hope you were blessed today. Uh, by the way, we have our prayer team that will be right up front of stage. Well, hey, Rock Church Anywhere fam. If you made that decision today to give your life to Christ, we would invite you to text SAVED to 52525. Once again, text SAVED to 52525 or visit sdrock.com slash SAVED. And we'd love to walk you through those next steps down this journey. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to talk about the seasons of life and change and how God stays constant. And one of the reasons is because I've been reading through Psalms lately, and uh, I know it's like a classic verse everyone knows, but it's, it's Psalm 119, 105. I remember as a kid memorizing it, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, and one thing is I've been going through this change um, and reading through the Psalms, it's like, man, not only is God constant in my life, but his word is constant and his word is truth and it is so good. And so I have some of my friends here and I wanted to kind of like expand on this if you guys don't mind. Um, what's one way that God has been constant in your life and how has he been truth and spoken truth maybe into your life through seasons of change? I know it's like the fall and like we got our denim on jackets and stuff. <laughs> um, so we feel change in the air, but I'm sure you guys may be feeling some changes in your life happening, um, some big things coming up. Do you guys have ways that God has stayed constant as good reminders for us? Yeah, first of all, I really love that you highlighted that verse. Um, I know in seasons of my life where I was trying to discern if God was calling me to go one direction or another, what door he was really opening. Mm. Uh, I, a pastor I highly just respect really spoke life into me about that. And he was like, sometimes we get so caught up about the, it, God doesn't speak to us necessarily in like step one, right. da, 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 step yeah. two, <laughs> da, 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 da. he was like, uh, the, you know, the Lord is a lamp at your feet, meaning mm. he trusts you to some extent when you are in relationship with him to discern the, the, the mm, direction and he's going to light that way, Amen. right? Because yeah. your steps are steps that have been invested in following him in mm -hmm. the past. And yeah. so as you move forward in the future, um, he's given, he's given you a little bit of space to, to, to trust in the relationship you guys have with oh, each other. Totally. And so I was like, what? <laughs> like, so it was just a, a really yeah. different way of looking at it. And also really, I think affirming in that we're growing, right? Yeah. It's not like a, it's, it's like a child, right? You, they're they're going to at first really need you to hold their hand, but eventually you can kind of, you know, just give them your pinky and mm. then you can kind of like, like let go. And, and mm. so I think there was an encouragement in that. And as seasons come and go, that my relationship with the Lord, as it gets closer and closer, it's going to feel a little less like I need all the direction. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I love what you shared about that. And I was at a conference in 2016. I heard Craig Rochelle say that, God's word is a lamp unto our feet, not a spotlight into our future. Yeah. And I know so That's often, good. you know, as believers, we, we want to hear from the Lord. We want to have clarity and direction. But I think sometimes we want everything to be super clear so that we actually yeah. don't have to rely <laughs> right. on his voice as right. much. And so a practice that my wife and I have is just writing down verses and placing them either on mirrors or in our car or near our computers, mm -hmm. uh, strategic places that we know we're going to be reminded of God's truth because life has its ups and its downs. Mm -hmm. you know, times where you're celebrating, times where you know, you're, you're mourning yeah. and being able to have something 
you know, God's firm foundation, his truth, his word that mm. never changes. Amen. If I look up Psalm Amen. 119, 50 years from now, it's going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. That's right, man. My feelings might change. That's true, yeah. My situation or my circumstances might be better or worse, mm -hmm. but his word will remain the same. And yeah. That's like, it's so great to know that um, we have a consistent and constant God. Well, bro, that's like a great way to close. And as we do close, uh, I want to once again shout out to our Rock Church Anywhere family that's watching online. Um, if you have any stories that you'd like to share, you can visit sdrock.com slash story or text story to 52525 or even just hit us in the chat and share how God is working in your life right now. Um, also, don't forget to follow us on all of our platforms at The Rock San Diego. And lastly, this is one of our last opportunities to plug Men's Conference. So yo, all the guys out there, uh, visit ignitemensd.com or you can text IGNITE to 52525. I'm registered, I'll be there, I'll see y'all later this month in October, um, and we'd love to see you as well. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see y'all soon.